it was kind of interesting, you know, in the early 1990s when the top of my head blew off and I kind of was staggering around trying to make sense of what was happening to me because suddenly I was seeing the world in a very different way and I was seeing myself in a very different way. Some people call it a spiritual awakening. Notice spiritual awakening, not religious awakening. I'm going to have some t-shirts done, you know, God save us from religion. It's kind of funny, you know, you talk about spirituality, people think you're talking about religion. Often it's the opposite, not always, but often. And religion for me is, in many cases, the opposite of spirituality. In my definition of religion, religion is the greatest form of mind control yet invented and at its most extreme, psychological fascism. The manipulation of fear and guilt to control. Spirituality is the opposite of that. It is setting the spirit free, celebrating our uniqueness because we're all aspects of the same whole but we're all unique aspects of the same whole. And crucially, respecting everyone else's right to express their uniqueness, free from imposition of someone else's belief system, someone else's version of right and wrong, moral and immoral. All this is crucial to how a few control the world. Because we have become, yes, in many cases, terrorized into denying what we are unique and once we do that we become a herd a herd mentality and it is the herd mentality that is the vehicle for the manipulation of the world by a very few people I'll give you an example of what I mean symbolic example I was uh, down uh, south in England um, I don't know, two or three years ago now, and across this great um, area of, uh, it was one of these Iron Age hill fort type things, but across it was this vast herd of sheep, hundreds of them. Never seen so many sheep in one place. And it's a nice day, you know, and I'm enjoying the day. And then the farmer arrives in his pickup truck, parks it, gets out of the truck, and I, I swear to you, I don't think he even moved an eyelid stood there against a stick. One or two or three of the sheep immediately react to, it must have been his eyelids I guess, I don't know, because they're going in the desired direction. Within minutes it's like exodus. Hundreds of them are following the one in front, you know. I have got mine of my own, we did this yesterday so we do it tomorrow, I guess we'll do it today and all that stuff. And the few stragglers, and there were remarkably few, who didn't immediately conform to what you might call that bar bar mentality, they were given the extra dose of fear with the sheepdog. Rope, 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 rope. All right, all right, all right, I'll go quietly. This combination of the bar bar and the fear rounded up this vast herd of sheep in a ridiculously short time. And I stood there and I thought, because I do from time to time, I'm looking at the human race here. This is how it's done. This is how a few can actually control the mass. Because you can't do it with tanks in the streets and soldiers at the door. There's too many people. It's like trying to physically herd sheep together. You can't do it. You'd need a, you'd need a, a man, maybe more than one, for every sheep to do it physically. You have to do it through the mind. Either through fear or through conditioning people to think the way you want them to think. So these hundreds of sheep were rounded up by one fella flicking his eyelids every now and again and a sheepdog dispensing fear. And that's how it's done in human terms also. It's amazing the extent to which we have given our power away, our spiritual power. It's all about taking our power back. Because once we do that, it's all over. The great pyramid of manipulation becomes impossible. But when we give it away, we're a doddle to manipulate.